Whilst Australian pro surfers have continuously pushed boundaries on the water, the country's surfboard shapers have also driven evolution in surfboard design and production. One of the greatest innovations came in the 1980s, as pro surfer Simon Anderson introduced the now industry standard thruster, a three-fin design which changed the face of surfing. The fin area is kind of like the engine of the surfboard. It's where you get the hold on the wave face. Without the fin, you could imagine you just slide around and it'd be uncontrollable. So the fin gives you direction and your power base from which you can get all the speed through your turn. I think the big thing about three fins compared to uh, twin fins or the single fin is that the thruster gives you speed in the turn, but you hold that speed throughout the length of your turn and you can connect it better into your next turn. So you get more speed, more drive, more flow through the turn. And from the very first board that I made, I could feel the difference in performance. I, I felt it was a 20% improvement in performance above single fins and twin fins. So I was pretty excited, as you can imagine. And whenever you get a design improvement like that, it, it benefits not only the guys at the top level, it benefits everyone in surfing, and that's probably the most satisfying thing about being the originator of this design. Still in demand as a shaper to the world's best surfers, each of Anderson's boards is made from scratch, using a process which allows for personal detail in each board. Well, surfboards. Uh, we start with blanks, which is foam. This is polyurethane or something like that. From this really raw product, we get a pretty sophisticated end result, but it starts off pretty blank. So the blank goes into the machining room and it gets cut. We call that a pre-shape. Before they're cut, we uh, work off the laptop if you're a designer shaper, which I am. So I've got a laptop and a program where we can adjust every minor detail of the shape. So that kind of does 70% of the shaping job. So these are my pre-shapes ready to go. It's my bay. You can still turn a good board into a bad one if you don't know what you're doing. So there's a little bit of skill involved. In the end, the shape is what gives you the character of your board and it can mean the difference between a magic board and an average board. We had the base set up so uh, the lighting casts a nice even shadow on the shape and uh, we actually work off the shadow. So if the shadow looks uneven, it's an indication that it's a spot that, that needs attention. I think shapers generally like to do everything by touch and feel, not so much measurement, but you know, there's, there's a blend of both. It's nice to know exactly what you've just done so you can repeat it, but we tend to uh, do that sort of work now on, on the design program. You know what's there in your design and you can adjust it there, but you really need to see it in the pre-shape form to to see how it's translating to the actual surfboard. The surfboard is always going to tell you, in the end, what needs to be adjusted. One of the things about shaping I found when I first started, I thought I was pretty good after three years. Then after five years, I realized that I wasn't that good at three years. I thought I was pretty good at five years and then at 10 years. Realize that, you know, it's a long journey and you keep improving. And if you pay attention to the detail and you try and learn something new every day, you will keep improving for a long, long time. That's it. After the board's shaped, you need to put the fin system in the shape. After the fin systems are put in the shape, it goes to the glassing bay. Here, we put the layers of fiberglass and resin on the board. So after it's been laminated and filler coated, it comes to the sanding area. It's probably the most important job because it, it gets the final finish going. From there, they come into the final checking area. You really got to make sure that everything's 100% perfect at this stage. You want someone to get down the beach, get their fins in, wax their board up, have a great surf. You slowly build and try and improve with every board that you make and well that's what happens when you have a relationship with a team rider. Like I'm working with Cooper Chapman, he's on the qualifying series and he's got his standard board. So we're on this program where we're reproducing that magic board but also just throwing in a few little uh, variations to try and pick up some improvement somewhere along the line. 
It's great to work with young guys because surfing's evolving along with the boards and the way they're surfing now is completely different to when I was surfing on the tour. I'm never going to be able to do an aerial. I've never done an aerial. I'm not going to be able to do one, but I know how to shape a board that's going to get you in the air and maybe give you a good chance of making that aerial. So it's a great thing to work with young people and stay relevant in surfing as it goes to these ridiculous levels of performance and God knows where.